Hey, y'all. Welcome back. It is Dr. Jada, and this is Mind Matters. And we're going to talk a little bit today about, of course, the gift that keeps on giving, which is the legal saga that has been making waves, and that is the Bonnie Willis case. But we're going to focus a little bit on her intriguing connection with Nathan Wade. And the reason why this came to me is because she made a statement about nobody's really interested in the love life of a 52 year old anyway. So, you know, just leave it alone and move on. And so here's what I want to know from you. I want to know if your love life at 50 years old is not worth talking about. And so as a licensed mental health counselor, I work with couples all the time. I work with couples as young as in their 20s. And yes, I have worked with couples in their 70s. And all of the couples have one thing in common. Do you know what that one thing is? They all want to have sex. Absolutely. Absolutely. But not just sex, because anyone can have sex. My couples they want to have meaningful connection. It's kind of like that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? It's that that third level of love and connectivity and you have to have it. You want to feel desired. You want to have a relationship that lasts and that is meaningful. So when Fonnie Willis said, um, I'm 52 years old. It really ain't that interesting if I'm in a relationship or not. It just, it, it just ain't. It, uh, it's not cool to anybody, and it, it ain't that sensational of a story. So let's focus on the case and the law and the facts. Well, let's buckle up and uncover the twists and the turns of the complex relationships where, you know, the personal dynamics of being in your 50s. I would even say in your 40s. Let's push it back a little bit. Let's go from say 40 to 50 to 60. Let's right there in that, just that window of time. Let's talk about love and sex after 40. Now, this is of course a fascinating journey that is both emotional and sexual, but let's talk about it. I certainly wanna hear uh, what you have to say in the comments. Click the like button. And if you haven't done so already, will you please, please subscribe to the channel. So let's get into this. Um, first of all, I just wanna say that I can remember years ago um, doing a marriage seminar with couples and we used this book here. It is called A Celebration of Sex. A Celebration of Sex. I actually did a video on this like seven years ago. And I talked about it because this book, it says a guide to enjoying God's gift of sexual intimacy. So the reason why I'm bringing this book up is because it has all sorts of um, activities and exercises. It goes into deep dives in how to have a healthy, that is the operative word here, healthy relationship with your partner. And again, I'm not just talking about, you know, just 60 second sex. I'm not talking about hit it or quit it sex. You know, I am not talking about, you know, that kind of sex. I'm not talking about, and, and, and it, as a therapist, you would be just um, blown away at some of the stuff that we hear as therapists. It's, it's fascinating. But here's what I think is important. And, and I'm going to go ahead and say, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to say it. Um, but yes, just recently, I had a, a client or it was a client with their partner and um, in, in, in the car, just kind of doing their things in their 50s. Yeah, in their 50s. So, so Fanny, 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 I want to know exactly what you're talking about because of course, of course. And, and here's what I, I think. I think that Fani was coming from the perspective of our society. And that would make sense because our society is so incredibly fixated on youth and beauty and the topic of love and sex after the age of 40 or 50 or even 60 is often 
overlooked and dismissed as it's just not interesting. However, this is my wheelhouse. This is something that I have been teaching forever. This is something that allows me to dive into the nooks and crannies of um, connectivity and how to uh, connect in a healthy way. And, and here's what I think is important. When we're talking about this from a behavioral and psychological perspective, the journey of understanding oneself, the journey of rediscovering yourself as you move through phases of life, I'm here to tell you that my clients, when they do the work, whether they're in their 40s or whether they're in their, in their 50s, in their 60s, and yes, I have several clients that I work with who are in their 70s. Shout out to all of the 70-year-olds who are still connecting and still making it happen. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, shout out to having end-of-life bliss in your 70s. Just saying. So when we're talking about this, you can have a fulfilled uh, relationship. And, and we're talking specifically sexual relationship. We're talking about intimacy. Yes, we are. We can have a fulfilling relationship beyond 40 and 50 and in, in 60 in some, in some cases that can, that is not only intriguing, but also incredibly fulfilling. So let's dive into why love and sex after 40 or 50 or 60 might be more captivating and enriching than commonly believed, especially after Fonnie Willis's comment of, I'm 52. Who's interested in my relationship? Move on. No, we are not going to move on because yes, if you are 52, you can have hot, heavy sex. And by the way, by the way, I have to say it. I don't know how how accurate it is. And will somebody please in the comments let me know if this is accurate or not because I'm not sure. <laughs> but I heard through the grapevine that Fonny had a nickname that was given to her by Nathan Wade and it was Gorilla Grip something or another. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm just saying. But let me know in the comments, am I wrong? Am I right? Did you hear the same thing? I don't know. But I'm going to ask you to just help me out on that. Just fact check me a little bit. I just want to know. So let's talk about the number one reason why people over the age of 40 into their 50s, into their 60s, and yes, possibly into their 70s are having great intimacy and sex number one emotional maturity and wisdom so of course with age comes emotional maturity and wisdom gained from life's experiences and so individuals who are older often have a deeper understanding of themselves and what they need this book that i told you about this book, book talks about erogenous zones. And if you don't know what an erogenous zone is, I want you to Google that because I'm, I'm not getting into the details. This is a short video. But just want to talk about um, understanding oneself. That means understanding what you want, what you don't want, understanding your boundaries, understanding your emotional boundaries, understanding your physical boundaries, understanding your touch boundaries, understanding one's self is a catalyst for how you engage with other people. And I teach this to my clients all the time. Oftentimes my clients, is, especially the couples, will fight over their needs not being met. So as a therapist, I ask them to share what they need with their partner. Do you know how many clients are unable to share what they need with their partner? You know why? Because they don't know. They don't 
know what they need. So I'm going to ask you, do you know what you want? Do you know what you need? Do you know how you need it? Do you know when you need it? Are you able to communicate effectively what you need? And if you cannot do that, if you can't do it standing in the mirror, brushing your teeth and think about what you need and then communicate it and you're like, okay, yes, I can communicate this. I can say, well, maybe you shouldn't be brushing your teeth, washing your face. Let's go with that. Washing your face and then you stand there and you say, I need and then you say it. There are certain things that each person needs in a relationship and whether you're able to communicate it or not is going to be how effective your relationship is. And so knowing who you are, knowing what you need, knowing why you need it, knowing why it's important to you. If you want to find out right now how you can know what it is you need, get a pen, piece of paper, create a new document in Word, get your notes on your phone, however you take down notes and start writing a list of what's important to you. And I'm not saying what society says is important. I'm not saying what your partner says is important because some of us, what we do is we hear what our partner wants and then we what our partner wants. And then we automatically in some way assume that that is what we want. And so we go with that and then we're not fulfilled and we're mad on the back end. So whether it's with intimacy, whether it's in your relationship, in your career, in your friendships, whatever it is, knowing what you want is the first step to maturity and wisdom and setting the life that you want. Now, that number one was emotional maturity and wisdom. Number two, liberation, in other words, freedom from societal expectations. I was so happy when I got to a place in my life where I could say, I really don't care. Like really. Like, legit, I don't care. <laughs> I do not care. And what's kind of funny is my husband, he used to, um, and that's my husband right there. He'd say, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that you don't care because you do care. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I really don't. I don't care. Like, I've gotten to a place in my life where I don't care. And it's a beautiful thing. And then my friends are like, you don't care, do you? I don't. I really don't care. Now, of course, we have to care within a reason. But to be liberated and freed from societal expectations is like, it's just like, yes. So certain individuals, when you reach 40, 50, usually around that area. You're just like, I just don't uh, know. There's certain things I'm not doing. Let me tell you what I'm not doing anymore. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Boundary. I love that. When I set boundaries, I'm like, shh. Now that's a boundary. <laughs> and I get to decide yay or nay. And most of the time it's nay. Anyway, as individuals reach a certain place, in their development, a certain phase of life or stage of life. Again, societal pressures and expectations just really don't mean as much. And so what that does is it liberates us in our relationships. It liberates us in our sexuality. We're freed from the constant, constant constraints of, how can I say it, like, youth oriented or youth centric ideas and people are often more open to exploring their desires and preferences when they get to this stage of life and I would say that this is a beautiful stage of life I didn't know um when I hit 40 that I was going to be like oh so this is what it's like and then I'm like no no this is me practicing saying no no, no. But then I just kind of got to like, <laughs> no, 
Uh-uh. Mm -mm. No. Negative. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm serious. I got to a place where I was just like, uh-uh. We will not be doing that negative. The freedom and the liberation that comes from societal expectations, mm -mm, don't even care anymore. And so here's something many of you probably do not know about me. But for many, many years, I was a, I'm almost, I'm hesitant to say it because I'm like, hmm, what does this mean when I, when I open up this can of worms? But I'm going to say it anyway. But um, so I worked for the largest traveling fashion show in the world and we traveled to 180 cities worldwide. So I was a model for the first part of my career. Um, I was in college and I remember um, sitting at, well, I was sitting at my desk, but I was doing an internship in Boston and um, I was at a, a television uh, station. I was at Channel 5 and I was doing my internship and living life. And I remember I get this phone call and it was from Eunice Johnson, who is, and I don't know how many of you know who she is, but she is the wife of John Johnson, John H. Johnson. And she was the person who, um, she was the overseer. She was the producer and director of Ebony Fashion Share, um, Ebony Fashion Fair, which was the largest um, traveling fashion show in the world. So I was with the company for 10 years and I started off as a model, but then eventually I became uh, the commentator. But all along, I always knew that I wanted to, um, well, let me back up. I was at the, um, I was sitting at my desk at channel five and I get the call and I'm working on a story. And um, when I get the phone call, she asked me, she said, Jada, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm in Boston and I'm working my internship at channel five. And she was like, oh, and I was like, why? Why are you calling me? What do you want? <laughs> what are, well, what's going on? I knew something was going on because um, previously, that previous year I had traveled with um I was a model and I traveled. She says, well, I was calling to ask and to see if you wanted to go to Paris and we'll be going to Rome. And But I, I don't want to take you away from your schooling and all the things. And so long story short, I ended up going to Paris and to Rome and to uh, so many different places. But here's my point. When we talk about being free from societal expectations and youth, and beauty, I know it firsthand. I can remember using my body as a moneymaker, um, my youth as a moneymaker, and being very much pinned down and um, influenced significantly in bondage, I'm going to go uh, go a step further and say in bondage to societal expectations. So when I joke around and when I say um, it feels good to say no, it's because I haven't always been able to say no. I Again, I can remember uh, being on the road and traveling and um, not really knowing you know, the power that maybe I possessed at that time, I, I didn't have a, a good handle on it during that time. And it was so many years ago. But when you reach a certain point in life, hopefully, hopefully this is for all of us who have uh, gotten to that place of 40 and then the 50 and then the 60 and then the 70. Hopefully we have We've been able to have lessons learned. We've collected lessons learned that allow us to explore who we are, um, that we're able to, to have a, a newfound sense of freedom and a greater sense of authenticity, a, say, a greater sense of relationship with self, allowing us to embrace not only our true selves but to express now I'm, I'm i'm linking it back to our sexuality allowing us to express our desires without fear of judgment without fear of being rejected without fear 
of being good enough, without fear of not being worthy, without fear of not being enough. My prayer for you is that now that you've reached this period of time in your life, that you have begun to cut the ties of societal expectations. That's number two. Here's number three. Number three is increased focus on intimacy. So with age, the focus shifts from a purely physical aspect of sex to a deeper emotional intimacy. And I don't know, I know some of you men are like, I ain't got time for that emotional stuff. So I want to know right here, hopefully you all have stayed with me this far, but I want to know from all of you men out there, especially men over 40, I want to know, I want to know, I need to know how important is emotional intimacy. We already know that the physical intimacy is important. We already know that. We, I don't want, do not, I don't care about the physical intimacy, intimacy, although it's important. Do not be writing in the comments talking about Dr. Jada. The physical intimacy is what's important. That's what's up. That's where it's, I, know, I already know that. Here's what I want to know. I want to know about the emotional intimacy. And do you even know what that is? That's what I want to know. Ladies, I want to know from you too. But listen, older adults often prioritize emotional connection, communication, and mutual respect in their relationships. Of course, once you have all of that in place, it leads to more vulnerable, trusting, satisfaction in sexual experiences. So that's number three. Here's number four. I hope you're staying with me. Sexual confidence and self-acceptance. So this is, this is important because contrary to popular belief, sexual desire and satisfaction, listen, ding, 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 actually improves with age. Now, remember this book? Remember this book I told you about? And if you really do want this book, I'll put it, um, I'll put a link to it in the comment section, because it really is a great, great book. It, it really is. It talks about the interaction. It, it Actually, before I move on, I'm going to um, tell you a couple of the chapters so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, of course, enjoying passionate intimacy, and there's mutual pleasuring, creative intercourse, making love to your wife. That's for the husband, and then making love to your husband. That's for the wife. And then um, section four is about overcoming common hurdles, body image and feeling sexy, sexy in lovemaking, um, women becoming more easily orgasmic. And, and when, and just sidebar, when I'm working with my women, um, that's a problem. It's really a problem. And for a number of reasons. We're not going to get into that this right now. And maybe, I don't know, maybe later on I, I can do um, maybe a Q&A live on some of this and see if we can't answer some of some of these questions. Um, but another one is staying lovers in the children years. And then 20 is sex after 45. Again, that's kind of what we're talking about here today. And then there's um, male malfunctions, female difficulties, um, making love when you have a disability, um, survivors of sexual abuse. Now, again, this is my wheelhouse, <laughs> uh, dealing with trauma and sexual abuse and working with survivors of sexual abuse, especially in the intimacy uh, realm. But again, very important. And then dealing with um, infertility. And then it goes on to healing brokenness. It talks about extramarital affairs, um, sexual integrity, and sexual addiction and things like that. But when I tell you this book is just really a powerful resource, that's what it is. It's a resource. And it's a resource um, for a number of reasons. And so anyway, now, um, I said this already, but I'm going to repeat it just to get back on track. Contrary to popular belief, sexual desire and satisfaction 
improves with age. Now, that doesn't mean that stuff doesn't start like changing and breaking down and you might be like, oh, snap, what, you know what? You know, you, you have all these questions. That's, I'm not saying that things are perfect. I'm saying that once you recognize what needs to shift, you learn how to work with where you are and you have a more fulfilling relationship. Why? Because you're more mature. You have grown. You understand yourself. You understand your partners. And if you get this book, then I have absolutely no connection to this book. Just so you know, I'm not making any money off of it, although I should, note to self. Um, here's what's important. You learn how to grow. You learn how to grow and you grow gracefully. Older adults tend to have a better understanding of their bodies and their sexual preferences leading to increased sexual confidence and self-acceptance. Now, here's the final, final one, and then I'm going to close out. Number five, exploration and adventure. Exploration and adventure. So far from being stagnant, love and sex after 40, 45, because I forgot that that said 45, 50, 60, 70, whatever it is, Usually during this period of time, because of the maturity of a person, there's an opportunity to explore and be adventurous. Many older adults are eager to explore new experiences, whether it's trying new activities together, traveling and exploring different aspects of their sexuality. And so the sense of adventure and curiosity can, of course, just completely interject um, excitement and vitality into a relationship. And again, that's what keeps um, older couples uh, dynamic and growing and continuing to evolve over time. And so I want to go back to Fani's statement <laughs> again. Um, and, you know, I keep, I say this all the time. This uh, Fani Willis case is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, I have another video that I am going to do and um, hopefully I'll get it up uh, not to maybe in the next couple of days, but I just want to talk about her statement. The train is still, or the train is coming, the, the train is coming, but all of the app, the accusations and how we use accusations as a cover or a smoke screen for our own inadequacies and our own deficiencies and um, not counting the cost. You know, the Bible says count the cost. And sometimes we don't count the cost when it comes to um, accusing others of something. You know, one of the things that I think is so very important when it comes to working with my clients as a therapist is having a foundation of truth. And for me, my, the basic fundamental principles that I hold so dear are rooted in principles that are biblical in nature. And so whether it is telling the truth, treating other people as I want to be treated, um, um, forgiving. I just had a, a situation where I was like, Lord, how many times do I need to forgive this person? I just need to know. <laughs> I just need to know because uh, I'm not sure if I'm feeling for, you know, like I need to forgive, but sometimes we have to do the things that we don't want to do. And that's what I believe allows us to be mature in how we engage with people and we engage with others. So I hope that something that I have said today in this video allows you to look at yourself, uh, look at your relationship, um, look at the situations around us and give more mercy, give more grace, share more love and give a hug or two and let others know that they are loved in the midst of this chaotic, love deficient society. With that being said, please uh, leave your comments below. Would love to know what you have to say about this topic. And also, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the, the page, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next video. 